Praise the Lord and welcome to Friday Night Alive. I'm Bob Fowler and seated beside me is my beautiful wife. Adis Fowler. Just in case you did Thank not you for know. The beautiful. <laughs> I don't have to ask you how you are feeling because I know that this is your favorite day of the week. Yes. And probably a lot of people that are watching mm-hmm. could amen that, saying that it's their favorite day of the week. You get to look back and see how the things that could have been would have been if God would not have intervened Amen. and given you supernatural peace Amen. and ability to deal with challenges. I'm thankful. Yeah. You know, I'm convinced that somehow in heaven we're going to be able to go to this spiritual library mm-hmm. and all of the things that we didn't know were taking place in our lives, it's there in real time. I mean, all the times that we didn't ask for the help of angels, but God sent angels. Yeah. We didn't ask for peace, but God gave us peace and then some. Mm -hmm. You know, just the extras that, you know, we try to give God the glory and the honor for what we know. Mm -hmm. But what about the things that we just don't know? Man, life would be so much Mm -hmm. more challenging and impossible if it were not for God's. For God's love and grace, not only toward the believer, but also to the unbeliever. Yes. You know? Well, he says that the sun rises for... Rises and set, the sun, the rain falls down on the righteous and the unrighteous. Mm -hmm. And, you know, God didn't start loving us when we became Christians, or as some would say, when they became lovable. Mm -hmm. He loved, he loves every type of person, every individual that, uh, that he has put a spirit within Mm -hmm. in order to walk this planet that we call earth for a period of time. Mm -hmm. But we're glad to be with you tonight. And if you have any questions or anything like that, please send them in and we'll check from time to time. But uh, we want to talk about something. And I love a subject like this Mm -hmm. because you can apply it. It's for everybody. You know, it's it's for everybody. Because it's something that we all need. Every one of us. Every, now, now, every one of us needing what we're going to talk about tonight and then taking the next step and admitting, taking ownership mm-hmm. might be something different. But you're 100% right. Every person, believer and unbeliever, mm-hmm. needs what we're talking about. You know, if, w- go ahead. And if there were ever a time where we needed this, it's the day we're living in. You know, just before I share what we're going to talk about Uh the idea and the thought and the truth that every person believer or unbeliever Mm -hmm. seeker somebody curious or somebody that's just an atheist and hates god every person needs what we're talking Mm -hmm. about now wouldn't it be something if we look at what we're going to talk about tonight if it's someone outside of you that needs encouragement Mm -hmm. and they're an unbeliever could it be that god could use the seed of encouragement to minister hope and encouragement to someone who Mm -hmm. doesn't even claim to want to know god and use that seed to lead a person Mm -hmm. to the lord this is such a powerful topic that we're talking about Mm -hmm. it's not only something that we need but it's also a seed in our bag that we can plant wherever we go and man you could tell so we're so we're talking about encouragement tonight Mm -hmm. and what i was going to say is you can tell when not only you need encouragement but you can look at somebody else and tell when they need encouragement Mm -hmm. sometimes it comes in the form of a smile or Mm -hmm. thank you for what you're doing Mm -hmm. or just being as believers sensitive to the holy spirit and what would be the most impactful act that we could sow that seed into so Mm -hmm. i'm looking forward to tonight so um you know in the middle of all things that can discourage us, uh, you know, the day that we're living in, we're in the middle of, uh, you know, a pandemic, um, racial tension. All kinds of things. Div- you know, economic hardships, right. you know. Um, like you said, everyone needs encouragement. And it's very interesting how God addresses that in the Word, you know. In Thessalonians 5.11, he says, Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up so isn't it something that god knew the importance of encouragement 
And, and it doesn't say, if you need encouragement, pray to me and I'll encourage you. Uh -huh. It tells them one, another. one to another. Uh -huh. So, you know, a lot of times when you try to sow a seed of encouragement to somebody, you mm -hmm. see that they're struggling and you just, God, what can I say to them? And you feel something that the Holy Spirit gives you. You encourage them. You try to build them up. But what we don't realize is oftentimes we hear the rest of the story of what was going on in that person's life, mm -hmm. and we walk away blown away and more encouraged than whatever we gave mm -hmm. because we realize that we're in a God moment mm -hmm. and we heard the voice of God and we were used by the Lord. Mm -hmm. So encouragement is yeah. just, it is something we can receive, but often it's something as believers, as you said, as we look around to this world, what is there that the world has to offer people mm -hmm. that's going to encourage them? Right. It's one bad report after another mm -hmm. bad report. Mm -hmm. And the gospel literally is translated good news. Yes. And we're the carriers of that good news. You say, well, I don't know how to encourage people. Man, learn a scripture that's a good, uh -huh. powerful scripture, maybe one that we'll use tonight, and just let that be. We all can do something. Mm -hmm. We can all be open to receive encouragement, but we can all also recognize that God's going to use us to be his light in this world. Absolutely. You know, I talked earlier today about, you know, Jesus said, thy kingdom come. Mm -hmm. I believe one of, if not the only, if not the biggest ways that that's going to happen is through us. Absolutely. Yeah, it's through us. Amen. So. And, you know, the writer of Hebrews says, encourage each other daily. I like that that he doesn't say occasionally, yes. but it's a, a, you know, a demand that is being put on us to be mindful yeah. of every day, making a decision to be an encourager. Yeah, don't wait till the last minute where you're broke down mm -hmm. and you're just daily, Yes, you know. And, and listen, there is something that we could find in the positive about anybody, mm -hmm. anybody. Because when we start thinking about encouragement, we realize we want to help them. Right. Well, what about if God were to lay the opportunity for us to help our enemy? Mm -hmm. To sow a seed of encouragement in our enemy. Mm -hmm. Hey, even if you got somebody that's a pest, I'll tell you one thing that you could also encourage them in is say, man, I'll give you one thing. You don't give up. <laughs> you just don't quit. <laughs> True. You know, but it's our perspective and it's like when we do what we're supposed to do, baby, God will kick in and just take it from there and do what only he can do, Amen. you know. Amen. But, you know, tonight I wanted also to, you know, understand what encouragement is. Okay. And uh, the definition of encouragement is the act of inspiring others with renewed courage, renewed hope, and renewed strength. Read that again. I want to make sure I heard you the right. The act of inspiring others. This is the definition of encouragement. Yes. The act of inspiring others with renewed courage, renewed hope, and with renewed strength. So, if somebody is struggling with discouragement, they're also struggling with a very small amount of of courage. Mm -hmm. So our courage will directly affect whether we feel encouraged or whether we feel like we're just so overwhelmed we don't know what to do. And it's something that it, it, it even brings about weakness. And you know, um, it, it compares to me that or it seems to me that encouragement is almost like a transfusion. Oh, man, that is you know? so good. And, you know, yeah. I heard a doctor's testimony um, about the fact that, you know, our blood carries oxygen. Uh huh. And that oxygen supplies life. Right. Strength. Right. To our lives. When we are low in our blood, you know, we are low in life and we are low in strength. And he shared that, you know, and being in the medical field, he would perform surgeries on patients and sometimes he would come around you know like doctors do right. rounds and he would find that those patients that that um he would go visit sometimes after a surgery these patients were weak and you know they could barely you know s 
sit up or put their head, their head up. Right. And you know, he he uh, would consult with the nurses and say, you know what, let's uh, give them a, a couple of transfusions. Right. You know, a couple. And it's something that, you know, these nurses would go and get blood. And it, it was almost like they were taking courage from someone else to give to this individual that has just gone through the, through a surgery or right, through a, through a right. trauma. And he says it would not fail every time that he would come by to see them the next day. Sometimes the beds were empty. These people were up, walking around, and you know, if this is what, you know, this transfu these transfusions of encouragement that if we give them to other people, to other to someone else they they will bring life into someone it it will you know uh strengthen them uh we have the oppor the opportunity like you said and as followers of jesus christ you know to be those uh, you know those that god uses to to you know to encourage those that come across our path on a daily basis you know uh Husbands need encouragement. Absolutely. Wives need encouragement. Children need encouragement. People in your workplace, you know, and it's just, uh, you know, recognizing the value that that we as believers carry, that we can right. speak, you know, the, the word says that the power of life and death is in our tongue. So And that we're, whatever we choose, whether we choose to speak life or death, you're either going to eat l fruit that is life or fruit that is death because yeah. the choice is up to us, but we are the ones who set the heart, what the harvest is going to be right. in motion. Yeah. Uh, and you know, there's certain times I think that people go a certain direction and then they realize, oh, this wasn't what I thought it would be or what I was prepared that it would be. Mm -hmm. And they want to make a decision, but there's some things now. God, a God of grace, God's a God of mercy. But there's mm -hmm. some things that we reap a harvest on. Is my point because of the seeds that we've sown? Mm -hmm. Now, when we come to our senses, like the prodigal son, he put himself in that pig pen. Nobody else, money didn't put him there. He put himself there. Mm -hmm. There were different vehicles in which he went there, but ultimately it was all because of his choices. Some would say, well, that's where he deserved to be. He reaped mm -hmm. what he sowed. But this is where God's love, he came to himself, he took ownership, and he went home and was thoroughly and completely restored, mm -hmm. not only inside, but restored externally before his family and before all those mm -hmm. that were a part of him departing. Mm -hmm. So, and then you had mentioned Leviticus 17 says literally, literally that life is in the blood. Yes. So that when, you know, everything physical came out of the spiritual. Mm -hmm. So if literally life is in our blood mm -hmm. and it gives all flesh life, spiritually speaking, the life that we've been given because of the blood, the transfusion and the washing of Jesus's blood now, and this is where those greater works than these come in because mm -hmm. now every one of us have the opportunity to do what Jesus did mm -hmm. because of his relationship with the father and because of the, the, the blood and the power and the authority mm -hmm. that that blood has produced in our lives. Now, when we lay hands on the sick or we encourage somebody, it's the same as if Jesus himself mm -hmm. were sitting there or standing there and encouraging them. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's, that's the authority that we've been given. Mm -hmm. And we don't carry it with cockiness or we carry it with humility and understanding how much we, we ourselves needed that encouragement yes. before we ever knew the Lord and how mm -hmm. gracious and kind he was to have mercy on us. Absolutely, you know? yes. You know, the Bible says to whom much is forgiven, mm -hmm. that person loves much. Mm -hmm. But I've also wondered, like, like Malachi 3.10 says, will a man rob God? Well, my, my answer is, Yes. <laughs> I can hear some say, well, they won't get away with it, but that wasn't a question. Yeah, people will rob God. So will people agree with everything that we're talking about tonight, that we are carriers of encouragement to a hurting and a broken, broken world, whether they're Christians or not? Mm -hmm. It's one thing to amen that, to agree with that. 
but will we put what we possess into practice mm -hmm. and see the manifestation and the whole purpose in which Christ did what he did for us and has given us what he has, it's not for us to say, look what I have. Mm -hmm. It's for us to be a conduit for that to flow yeah, through. Yes. So it's recognizing that we need encouragement, but we're also given into mm -hmm. the world to encourage maybe people that we don't like. Right. But will we take the next step and just say, okay, God, I sur and it, and it kind of comes back to brokenness. I surrender. Mm -hmm. You know, I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior. All means all. Mm -hmm. I surrender all. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a constant dying because there's areas of our flesh and selfishness that we really don't know we have. But at some point in our life, we we're talking about these seasons and phases that we go through and the mm -hmm. things that we deal with. That there's going to be moments in our life we're going to realize, ooh, that's an area that I need to crucify. Mm -hmm. I need to give to Jesus. I didn't know that that, that attitude was in me. Mm -hmm. uh, if that's just me, you pray for me. But I'm just telling you, don't be surprised. Because that's how much God loves us. We're mm -hmm. constantly being purified in our soul. We're learning to live more according to who we are in the spirit than not who we are in the flesh. And I love it when the Holy Spirit, if nothing else, man, he's still speaking to me and I'm still able to hear him. Because you know when he, mm -hmm. when your father, your heavenly father goes to correct, he chastens whom he loves. Mm -hmm. So that's a good thing. If he spanks you a little bit, thank you that you love me enough to do it, you know. <laughs> but that's kind of what makes our personal relationship with Christ. And I know we're talking about encouragement. Exciting. Mm -hmm. If we'll stay open to continue to learn. And I, we were talking last night. I said, we, you were asking me something. I forget what it was. And I said, I've learned to say, this is how I see it right now. Because mm -hmm. I've learned that five years from now, 10 years from now. I see things different. Differently. Mm -hmm. Differently. Mm -hmm. So you always want to stay teachable. You, you want to be trainable. Mm -hmm. You want to be secure. Mm -hmm. But you want to be able to receive encouragement. And yeah. I think someone who in, receives encouragement, they have to be broken. Yeah. And I don't mean broken down. I just mean receptive, right. receptive, you know. Mm -hmm. Preachers are hard. You know how many years it took me that when I would sit in an audience and I'd listen to somebody preach, how I wasn't preaching right there behind them and try to go past them, oh, I would have given them this one. That was not the debt. That's not what it was there for. That was a moment for me to receive. And it took me a while to say, I turn that part of my brain off and I just look for something that's going to minister to me. So we have to be receptive to, you know, I believe there's going to be people that are going to watch this. They're going to think their life is coming to an end, but they're just coming into a new season. Absolutely. Better season. And I hope that they're discovering that, you know, and they can be used to be yeah. an encourager. Anybody you know? can be an encourager yes. or receive yes. encouragement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, Proverbs 10, 21 says, the lips of the righteous are a fountain of life. Shoo, man, that's a good, the, the you know, lips of the righteous are a fountain, fountain of life. Mm. The lips of the righteous nourish many. So there is nourishment in what we allow our words to say. And, you know, it's, again, like I said, a transfusion. Our words are a transfusion of strength, you know, and in, and in the world that we're living in, that things are so negative. And if people, you know, constantly are, are being dragged down yep. by situations, yep. you know, what that God would use our tongue, you know, to be... A source of life. Uh, yes. Encouragement. It's a, it, speak life. And, um, you know, it's something when you were just sharing with how many documentaries and stories have we both come across of women who just went from one relationship to another, to another, to another, and always from one abuser physically mm -hmm. and verbally. And how many of them have said, you know, I can't really name all of the times that I was physically hit, but every time that something hurtful mm -hmm. or hateful was said, it found a place in my heart yeah. words mm -hmm. are powerful well like you said they could be uh, you know the words are either fruit or they can be poison yes you know? yes so it can produce something good in us give us life give us a motive you know or it can just bring us down and if god's given us a dream or a vision mm -hmm. if we yes i i receive it i agree with it it's from god but if we don't 
give birth to that mm -hmm. through the words of our lips and the fruit of our lips, mm -hmm. it's going to severely hinder, if not cancel out, even what God has put mm -hmm. within our heart. He uses our mouth. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's the power of words. And, you know, I could not help while I was getting ready for this to remember a young man. Remember um, Stephen? Oh, yeah, that yeah, he, yeah. He made an impact in our life. Oh, and man. this was yeah. a, a special needs young man that, that was in our church. And every time that he would see us, he would, he would either say, <laughs> Pastor Bob, are you proud of me? Are you proud of me, Pastor Bob? I'm proud of you. And, and that stayed with us oh you know, yeah stayed in with such us, a lovely you know, beautiful, beautiful way. way yes i mean you know that he would be mindful of 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 whether people were were proud of him and and you know and even to this day you know we constantly tell our children you know we're proud of you yep. you know and even when they're going to difficult times hang in there you know whether it's a bad day or a bad season yeah you understand me not to give up and it's again it's the power of words that can really change the atmosphere in the life of someone you know whether they're going to give up or they're going to press on yeah and he was a young man that didn't care what people thought mm -hmm. he was tender-hearted but i will say not only during our time there but the years preceding and following, mm -hmm. I would be willing to say that the most beautiful, powerful, impact, impactful prayers were not prayed by preachers mm -hmm. in that building. Mm -hmm. They were prayed by him, him yes. because of the simplicity of mm -hmm. his words, uh, but the sincerity of his heart, mm -hmm. the purity of his heart. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, and, and does it, I guess I've never, Maybe it's because I've never been comfortable around preachers that would fall into this particular category, but I've never been around preachers that they would look at him interrupting their prayer just before they preached because he wanted to pray. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know of anyone that would say, well, no, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But I know that they're out there, mm -hmm. that they would let it happen once, mm -hmm. but they would shut it down. So, and it's a stretch for me even to say this, but to think of myself acting that way, mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't even that way back in the, out in the world, mm -hmm. you know, but there are some people that are like that. They want to control the environment, but that young man's words would not have produced anything. And we wouldn't be talking about it mm -hmm. if I buttoned his mouth and said, no, you can't speak mm -hmm. here anymore. Yeah. Man, I would be such a rotten loser right mm -hmm. now, you know, and yeah, you go to church and, you know, you have to have some type of order. But I like churches that let their kids participate in praise and worship. Let their kids, you know, remove the starch out of the service. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I know there's a time you dismiss the kids and they go to, I know all that. But if you want, if now, if you're selfish, you put them away. But if you're vision minded, you say they need to be in this environment. They need to know what a move of God looks like. Mm -hmm. They know what they need to know what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. You need that experience, personal, firsthand. Not reading in a in a you know. There are moments I was telling you and Daniel the other night that, like me, like anyone else, you you chat. You're challenged by doubt. You're mm -hmm. challenged by discouragement. And there are times that I have to go back in my life as a believer mm -hmm. and remember something that I know that I know that I know that I know that it was mm -hmm. God. And I know how bad it looked, terrible it looked, and only God would even come close to it. Mm -hmm. And I bring that right to where I'm at and say, wait a minute, he's not changed. He's the same yesterday. I think of Caleb when he was baptized in the Holy Spirit. Nobody was there. Nobody laid hands on him. Mm -hmm. He had a radical, radical experience with the Holy Spirit. Now, I look at the beauty of him now, he can pray in his spirit, he can pray in his prayer line, all of that. But the beauty is he's forever marked. Mm -hmm. Whenever the enemy comes, he now has a monument that he can come back to and say, mm -hmm. I may not be looking good right now, but I remember this moment and I cannot deny that it ever happened. And I'm going to draw encouragement from knowing that it wasn't a one-time thing. Mm -hmm. That that is that the Holy Spirit is still with me. He's mm -hmm. present with me. Mm -hmm. So, 
But we all need those moments to where sometimes we have to encourage ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and you know, um, one other way that I think encouragement <clears throat> is displayed is through actions. Very and, good. And, you know, and we see in Matthew 25 how the Lord says, I was hungry and you gave mm -hmm. me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. So here we see that every time that we extend ourselves to do an action for someone, it's like he said, like if we were doing it for him. And you know, we've been talking about words and in and, and, and reference to encouragement, but you know, sometimes encouragement can happen by listening to someone. And, yep. and, and giving someone a, a listening ear. And it was interesting to me that I, I've stayed thinking about something you said the other night when you were looking at a, a, a commentator or a person on TV uh -huh. that he would allow his interviewers uh, time to express themselves. He wasn't cutting in on them. And, and, and that... Uh, it was something that was impactful to you, you know, that he wasn't in a rush to to say what he thought, but he would stop and listen to what others had to say. And so many times, you know what, encouragement can, can take place by you uh, offering yourself to be a listening ear yeah. to someone who needs maybe that action of symp uh, sympathy from someone yeah. and just... Uh, feeling it, that they're important enough to be heard. Yeah, and before I shared it with you, I took it, and I didn't share it to you for you, but I processed it and applied it to my life. Mm -hmm. uh, because you're right, and I hadn't looked at it from that angle until just now, that sometimes the greatest, one of the sources of encouragement could just be listening. Mm -hmm. And that makes it, a lot easier <laughs> if we can just sometimes keep our mouths shut and our ears and our heart open that at the conclusion of whoever is sharing their heart with you is finished mm -hmm. the answer may be really easy it yeah. may be very you know a lot of like you said a lot i think as men sometimes we think of oh yeah women they need to talk you know there's been statistics that have come out Men die before women because they talk less, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. But the truth is women are a little bit more expressive mm -hmm. and they reap the benefit. You reap mm -hmm. the benefit of it. Uh, men are a little bit different. Not all men, uh, but there are some, maybe a challenge in some men's hearts or people's hearts is that they recognize I do struggle in listening. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you literally got to, they bite your tongue just to remind yourself that this is a time. I, I remember when I was in college, I wasn't married. I wasn't dating anybody, but I was taking this class called Marriage and Family. And Brother Austin was teaching this class, and he made a statement that marked my life. He said, listening to another person is not thinking of what you're going to say in that response so when they stop talking. That is so That's good. not listening. Mm -hmm. Listening is listening. Yes. It's not giving your opinion or how many people, and I've had this happen in my life, you know, you, I, you, 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 and, and I've taken it, we've taken it for our benefit because in ministry, you got to be able to listen. Mm -hmm. You know, but we've all encountered people that you share something, you know, somebody says, how are you doing? Well, you share what, how you're doing, and they cut you off, and and as if to say, well, if you think you got it bad, let me tell you what I'm going through. That person is not listening. They're bumping one up. You are. <laughs> you're listening now. They flip the script on you. Yeah. You know, and uh, I think it's wise to identify people like that if that's an area that they struggle in, and when you are in need and you know the response, don't waste your time. That's a precious, valuable thing that, because there are people that, you know, need a little more encouragement than, uh, you know, I know it's raining now, but the sun is on the other side of the clouds. There's some people that are contemplating suicide. They're facing challenges. They're overwhelmed. They, ne they don't, they feel not, not prepared for where they're at. Mm -hmm. And so when you consider the stakes of another, mm -hmm. another human life, 
the value of if encouragement was stopped shoots through the roof mm -hmm. because as believers, we can always, always find something mm -hmm. to share with somebody yes. to encourage yes. them. Yeah. And, and we don't know unless they allow us to know mm -hmm. the impact yes. of, you know, I mean, there have been people that have contemplated taking their life and mm -hmm. somebody just felt led in their heart mm -hmm. to call them. Mm -hmm person had the gun in their hand mm -hmm. and it was that phone call that last moment encouragement that saved their life mm -hmm. and they went on to preach the gospel mm -hmm. so i mean we just never know mm -hmm. that's why man when we get to heaven i want to see those things that we didn't know mm -hmm. i don't need to see the stuff that i already know i was there mm -hmm. show me this behind the scenes mm -hmm. show, because I, i've said for years i you'll know my angels because their crown's going to be bent they're going to have a a wing that's a little messed up. Why? Mm -hmm. Because I put them to work. <laughs> mm -hmm. But those behind the scene things that God, or that word of encouragement that somebody shares or receives, and it doesn't seem to take hold then, but then a couple of days go by and the Holy Spirit reminds that person of that word of encouragement when mm -hmm. they needed it. Mm -hmm. Here they're carrying that encouragement. Mm -hmm. So many fascinating things mm -hmm. can happen when we talk about encouragement. Yeah. And God and God uses so many avenues to encourage people. And you know, there's people who have, you know, the gift or the ministry of maybe just dropping small notes to people. And how many times right. have the, have those individuals call back and said, "Man, that note, that word of encouragement came at just the right time." Um, you know, I heard a testimony the, uh, of a very well-known minister. You know that he he fell into sin, ha had some tragic things happen to him. As a, as a result, he ended up in jail doing jail time. And uh, uh, the point that you know he his family just kind of strayed away from him. And there, he, you know, he his job was cleaning bathrooms. You know, there right. in the prison. And he says one day the jailer or whatever comes to him and says, do you have a visitor? And he said, um, it's not visitation day. He says, well, we've made a special arrangement. And he said, he sat there and in a room and he looked down and his shoes had holes and he stunk like what he was doing, which was right. cleaning toilets. And here this well-known minister walks in the door mm. and he comes to him and he says, oh, brother, brother, don't come close to me because I smell like what I was doing. Right. And that that man it didn't stop him. Yeah. He put his arms around him and said, I just I just want you to know that God loves you. Me and my wife love you and God is not done with you. And you know Impacted the, his life in a powerful this, way. This man walk you know, years later has gotten things right, is it's living for God, serving God, and goes on to, to give this testimony. So, you know, th the word says in Ecclesiastes 4.10, he says, two are better than one. Yeah. If one falls down, his friends can help him up, but pity the man that falls and has no one to help him. So how important it is for us to extend th that encouragement, that hand, that 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 word or whether it's that action you know it's and it's in in a in the world we're living in everybody is so self uh, i guess how much is going to cost and, me indulge and you know yeah. absolutely you said sometimes you know time is precious to people and they they don't want to stop you know we constantly see on tv so many times tragically there are accidents that vehicles run away and leave, you know, the injured person, who would have thought that we would come to this, right? Yeah. But uh, it's the need to realize that, you know, there's people out there that need Jesus, and we are the, we are the vessels that, that he has Amen. put here on earth. Like you said, his kingdom come. It's his way of doing things, and it's going to be done through us. Amen. Yes. Uh, let me read a couple of scriptures. The first one, uh, just before we finish tonight, uh, is found in Philippians 4.13, and most of you can quote it. Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. 
And again, when you read the scripture slowly, one word at a time, that tells you when Paul says, who strengthens me, he's speaking from firsthand experience. Because yes, even the Apostle Paul needed to be encouraged. Even Mm -hmm. the Apostle Paul needed to be built up. See, when we slow down and we invite the Holy Spirit into the process, but we just read the scripture, it means I can do all things, no matter what that all may be, all things could be easy, all things could be very challenging, but through Christ. Now, when you say through Christ, you're letting go of how he wants to do it. Yes. He, it may be through Christ of him inspiring you, strengthening you, anointing you to do it yourself, but it may be through Christ and that he speaks to others and that you, he allows your heart to be open to receive the encouragement of other people. Mm-hmm. You know, when we think about Ephesians 3.20, now unto him who's able to do exceeding abundantly, God always does more than we ever ask mm-hmm. or dream or even think every time. Well, in that particular situation, it may appear that that person needs encouragement, but maybe they're struggling with pride. Mm-hmm. And so God's going to kill two birds with one stone. <laughs> He's not only going to let the person be encouraged by them being open and receptive to outside encouragement, but he's also going to humble them and put them in a position to where they can see even greater things. Mm -hmm. God just wants to bless us. Some would argue and I would be right there. God's already blessed us, but God wants us to have a good life, a peaceful life, a restful life. Mm -hmm. And I know for some people that may seem a distant idea right now Mm -hmm. but that's god's will Mm -hmm. he doesn't want you to struggle with your money he doesn't want you to struggle and that may not mean god giving you a better job you're going to make four times as much maybe he wants to teach you how to manage what you have and typically most financial challenges come because of that Mm -hmm. it's not more of it's managing and be a better steward so only god can reveal those truths to you so if you step out and you say okay god i'm doing pretty good I'm open for encouragement, but God, I'm also open for you to lead me to people that I can sow a seed of encouragement in. I promise you, yes. if you've ever wanted to hear and see God do answer a prayer, that's one that he will answer. Mm-hmm. Or, Lord, help me to be more like you. <laughs> I hope you're feeling really good and strong that morning when you pray that one. You don't want to be tore up and needing encouragement. You want to be on top of everything because he's going to let you know what it's like to be more like mm-hmm. him. So... And I guess the the key to it is we can have it. Mm -hmm. Let's be encouragers. We can be encouragers. Yes. Yeah. And if we reap what we sow, which we do, I love what you brought out. It pays to sow encouragement even when you don't need it because you never know when you will. Mm -hmm. And it's wonderful to to be in a position to say, you know, God, I've tried to be an encourager. Mm -hmm. I need some. Would you bring the right person to me? And Lord, I'll be open to them. Mm -hmm. Because you've sown seeds, Mm -hmm. and therefore you can call in that harvest. Harvest. So let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we love you. We thank you. We're grateful. We thank you for you being the ultimate encourager. But we thank you for other brothers, sisters in the Lord, family, friends, people that we know on our job, at home, wherever we go, that if we're open when we need it, you'll allow somebody to be sensitive to you and to sow a seed of encouragement into us. But Lord, also, I pray that you'd help us all as believers, as people of faith, help us all to be encouragers, to take the overabundance of courage that we possess and instill it, impart it, give it, sow it into somebody who their courage is weak. And we just pray that you'd help us, use us, bless your people throughout the rest of the evening. You know what they have need of. Pray that you would let this be a blessed, prosperous weekend for every one of us and in every sense of the word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we pray that you were encouraged. We want to encourage you. If you have not gone to our YouTube channel yet, please do so at Faith is the Victory Fellowship YouTube. There you're going to find all of the messages that we've ministered. But while you're there, take a moment and subscribe. Last but not least, at the end of this program, please go into the description section. And there you're going to find several safe, simple, and secure ways in which we provided for you to give a financial seed and to be a blessing 
the ministry. Thank you so very, very much. Well, we're going to begin enjoying our weekend. We pray that you do the same. We want to tell you that we love you. God loves you. And as always, never forget, He, he is faithful. faithful.